Hello, my name is Kurt, and today I'll be talking about something I've been thinking about for a while. Now, if you're like me, you spend a lot of time thinking about religion, philosophy, um, the universe, esoteric things, space, aliens, etc. Constantly questioning the world around you, constantly questioning the purpose, constantly questioning everything. Now, there was a period of my life that I want to share with you guys because I've learned something phenomenal from this one experience that I had. There was a point in my life where I had nothing. No money, um, no food, nothing. I don't want to get into it. It was a really rough time in my life. Maybe I'll share it sometime in the future, but I don't want to talk about it now. But um, I had nothing, literally nothing. So even the clothes I had on my back were not mine. They were, um, they were secondhand. And um, I sat under a tree and I said, I need to know the damn truth. What am I doing here? What's the purpose? Uh, where is God? Show me some kind of proof of grace. Show me anything. Anything. Right? I had nothing better to do. So, I sat there and I questioned and I meditated and I thought and I thought and I thought. And then, there was this moment where it just like, it was so strange. I can't really describe it. it it's, it's very, very hard to describe if you if you haven't experienced it like if i tell you about it you'll be like oh yeah whatever that's not a big deal but when you have an experience such as this it's it's mind-blowing so i was sitting there meditating and then all of a sudden it's like i was thinking what is the purpose of life what is all this you know and then i started to cry i literally started to cry and then i started to laugh at the same time i was crying and laughing at the same time at how absurd everything was and then something in my mind said, something kind of spoke to me and said, this is it, you know, this is it. You're born pure, you're born naked. You wander this earth searching for the truth or whatever, when you have the truth within you, you are the truth. That's it, that's all there is. You are a product of the universe experiencing itself. I don't wanna get into new agey terms or whatever, but um, that's pretty much how it was, you know. Um, and this kind of ties into this whole thing. Like I still research philosophy, religions and everything because I did have, uh, you know, phenomenal experiences and extraordinary experiences that are unexplainable when it comes to the paranormal and stuff like that. And I always want to find out the answer, but you know, sometimes you just got to relax. You know, you just got to be like, you know what, screw it. This is it, you know? And um, this is kind of what religions and all these um uh, i don't want to say philosophies but religions belief systems and everything they kind of lead astray because i don't want to bash religions or anything but they put you into this mentality where they always make you look forward to something that oh god is going to help you that that this and that 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 jesus died for your sins or whatever or that allah or muhammad or buddha or whatever whatever you believe in there's always a a belief where see the buddha sat on the tree and got enlightened they never really say what enlightenment was but i think it's something like this it just you start laughing because it's so ridiculous you know like when buddha kind of set out on his journey and stuff like he he did um some things that were uh, aesthetic or ascetic i forgot what it's called but asceticism or something like that i forgot the word but it's like pretty much starving yourself and neglecting your body and um getting into this state where you're kind of trying to ascend your body or or learn truth from suffering sort of and he went through all this stuff and he sat on their tree and just laughed you know like they they explain it as some kind of phenomenal thing like he started glowing and like you know um all this stuff but i, I just think it, it was a pretty simple thing but anyway back to what i was saying it's like when you get caught up in in philosophy or religion or even atheism or everything you get kind of confused. You don't know what to think. Plato says this. Socrates says this. Buddha said this. Uh, Krishna said this. Um, you know, any other entity or, or God or whatever said something else. And then you're like, what the hell am I supposed to believe in? You know, what, what am I supposed to get out of this? You get more confusion than actually answers, you know? 
which is kind of good in a way because it gets you questioning things around you and questioning yourself as well. And pretty much, I'm gonna cut it short, I don't wanna make this video too long. Pretty much what I wanted to say is that everything you could possibly know is within you already. Where do you think all these philosophies came from? Where do you think all these religions came from? Where do you think all of this stuff came from? People questioning their existence and um, kind of anxiety of death or whatever, they, they feared death so they wanted an explanation. They, they wanted to believe that something existed beyond, you know? But ultimately it came down to people just digging within themselves, getting something, and then sharing it with people, which is what I'm trying to do, you know? And um, that's how all of these things arise. So do not put yourself down. Do not think, oh, you know, I can't be like Jesus because when I call myself Jesus, people will think I'm schizophrenic or whatever. I can't be the next Buddha because whatever. You could be whatever you want to be, you know? These people were nobody special. They were just like you and me, except they shared knowledge that people thought were phenomenal, you know? Was phenomenal, sorry. But, um, or mind changing or like something that nobody else figured out back then, you know? So the point is, look within yourself, meditate. Um, all these things, if you look into occultism, if you look into prayer, if you look into all this stuff, uh, occultism in general, Primarily, like I'm starting to think that all the procedures, all the all the techniques, everything is pretty much kind of in a way changing yourself in such a way that it's like the transmutation of lead into gold. Like I always say that because that's the the alchemist's philosophy, and I do follow the way of the alchemists. You know, I do experiment with stuff. You know. I got a retort and a whole laboratory set up and like I do all this crazy stuff because I'm trying to find something, you know? But like I said, it, it's all frantic. It, this whole frantic search leads you to some answers but then leads you to more confusion. So I just say, the ultimate power is within you. Sit down, think, question, and try to figure out who you are. Once you figure, who, figure out who you are and you accept all your faults, your um, your your problems, your 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 um, positive aspects. Once you acknowledge who you are completely, and you know, you get that all all out of the way, you become a better person. And through becoming a better person, you view the world around you in a different way. I I, I got off track before when I was talking about occultism, and it's like. Um, I think what, what, what certain uh, esoteric techniques and whatever, what they do is actually change your blood chemistry in a way, and they change your brain chemistry. Brain chemistry for sure, because your thoughts or whatever, and meditation itself could uh, cause neuroplasticity or whatever it's called, where your brain kind of grows in different patterns and, and develops in different parts and the gray matter. It's all this tricky science stuff, you know? But in the end, all these practices kind of change you as a person within and in a different way you see you have to change yourself physically and spiritually before the kind of transmutation happens you know what i mean so it changes your kind of your blood chemistry the way your body works the way your brain works whatever and then you become more adept this is where all these cities or cds whatever that the indians call the magical powers that uh you know, if people meditate enough or gain certain points of enlightenment or whatever, you get superpowers like you could float or you get um, telepathy or all this stuff. But in the end, it just comes down to the progression of the human being. Whether these powers exist or not, I'm not sure. I had experiences where I could, I could verify that certain things do exist. But like I said, I, I, I like to remain skeptical because there's a lot you can't answer in this world, you know? Even if somebody floats in front of you and yes, they do claim that it's a supernatural power and you find out that it's not a hoax, you know, or anything and that it's actually legitimately real and people do research on it and whatever and science claims that it's real, so what, you know? Okay, you, now we know that people could float, but who the hell knows what else is out there, you know? Who, who knows what, what other potentials are out there? You know, you got one dude floating and who, who knows? Maybe there's another person who could like 
uh, control fire or something, you know? Like, this, these are all crazy ideas, whatever, but I'm trying to exaggerate a little bit to get my point across, you know? Um, if you look into Tibetan um, techniques and whatever, um, Tibetan Book of the Dead, or, or in theory, well, in general, they all kind of come down to the same thing, like the chakras and, and the, the certain acupressure points and the meridians and all this stuff. In the end, all these spiritual points or whatever, they're unnecessary. It's all focal points. Yes, they may exist. Same thing with New Agers. They think, oh yeah, crystals, I'm going to buy this crystal and it's going to help me. The crystal is not what it does. If you found a damn rock on, on, on the side of the street or whatever and you put your willpower into it and you believe that it will heal you or it will make you lucid dream or whatever, it will. That's just how it works. That's how kind of the new new age thing works. You know, they, they put out all these books that, oh, amethyst does this and uh, quartz does this and smoky quartz does this and, uh, you know, whatever all the different stones you know rose quartz does something else and then you know what that does you read the book and then it makes you figure out okay amethyst helps with lucid dreaming so it kind of like programs that in your brain and kind of like i don't want to say brainwashes you but puts that belief in your head and you go out and buy amethyst and you really believe that it's going to help you lucid dream or help with dreams or protection whatever it will because it's not the power of the stone. It may have some intrinsic power. Stones may have some power within them, crystals or whatever, but it's all, in my opinion, it's all exaggerated. You don't need a rock. You don't need anything. You don't need any uh, crystals or whatever. It's like, it's literally, it all comes down to your own power. This is what I'm trying to get, out, uh, get down to. You are pretty much all that is because who cares? Like uh, Terence McKenna said, nobody is smarter than you are. And if they are, who cares? You know, that's their life. That's their kind of problem. And I agree with this philosophy in a way, you know. You are who you are. Pretty much, I don't, I don't want to say, like, don't be narcissistic or whatever. Don't believe you're, like, uh, a shining god or whatever. But I'm just saying, we all have the same potential. So don't put yourself down or whatever and... Like I said, the, the main reason of this video was kind of because a lot of people get lost in philosophy, lost in religion, lost in all this stuff, lost in even lucid dreaming. You know, you, you analyze your dreams and they tell you different things about you and then you get shocked. Like your dreams may tell you that, um, like, that you actually like this person or whatever and in the end, like you never knew that and you get shocked and then you have to reevaluate your whole life or whatever because it's it's super strange you know but it's pretty much it inquire within look within yourself this is where all the philosophers got their knowledge this is where everybody gets their knowledge the world around you is just a playground if you could get information from it all this stuff is here to assist you. There's certain plants that are literally growing around me right now that are medicinal and can save, you know, uh, you know, me from, uh, you know, bugs or whatever, you know? So it's all kind of the universe. I, I don't want to sound too new agey. <laughs> Sorry, it's like, like, I don't want to, but it's hard to describe this stuff without like saying stuff, I guess. But everything has intrinsic power in a certain way. See, like a medicinal plant might have medicinal properties that are verified by science or whatever, but if you instill a belief further, like let's say you gave me a, an herb that I didn't know anything about and you didn't tell me what it was for and I had like a stomach ache, for example, and I wanted that stomach ache to be gone, I would believe, I would put my intention and I would put my willpower into that herb and into that belief to 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 make it um heal my stomach and then you might find out that it was actually a medicinal herb for your stomach anyway things work like this all the time but even if they don't work um there's there's a certain power of the placebo effect and many of these things in the esoteric world or whatever i'm starting to realize are just placebo effects you're fooling yourself into believing that you know you you put on your magician robe and you put you, you take out a dagger you start waving it